Alexa. We are so we are glad to have you all here. Yes, as you have seen, we are recording this session. And the reason why we like to record uh, such sessions is this is a very informative session and it will be great to share uh, with anyone uh, or rather with other gig workers who might have missed on this. I'm sure um, there'll, be, there'll be great insights. So yeah, in case you don't want to be recorded, you may opt to drop off. Um, I will start with uh, sharing up Kenya, our partnership with GIZ, and then we'll proceed to uh, inviting Anna to talk to us uh, about her experience as a virtual assistant. And thereafter, we'll have a Q&A session where you will get a chance to ask uh, Anna any questions that you may have. So allow me share my screen. Uh, is that you sharing? Maybe you can stop so that I share. No, again. it's me sharing. Let me stop sharing. Ah, uh, okay. So uh, this is a little bit about uh, Dot Kenya. Uh, just a few minutes. Yeah. So uh, who is Digital Opportunity Trust Kenya? Uh, we call ourselves in brief or abbreviated as DOT Kenya. And what we do is we support at scale underserved young people, particularly young women, to overcome the digital divide. And we are so proud to report that uh, between uh, January 2021 uh, through uh, mid 2022, we've been able to positively impact over 177 young people um, across the DOT network. Uh, our vision is all underserved and disadvantaged young women and men realize their potential in an inclusive digital economy. And our mission is to mobilize and inspire underserved and disadvantaged young people with digital literacy, 21st century skills, and the self-confidence that will enable them to thrive in an inclusive digital economy. So we have uh, various programs under our Daring to Shift project. That is the Digital Jobs Level 1, Digital Jobs Level 2. Um, these two, we abbreviate them as DD1 and DD2. And then we have Digital uh, Business Plus ICT, which we also abbreviate as DB. And then we have the Community Leadership Program and the Social Innovation Program. So under the Community Leadership pro Program is, uh, we target um, university graduates. Um, they should be proficient in Microsoft Office functions. Uh, we offer them a one-year internship um, where after training, they get to uh, facilitate our DG1, DG2, and DB programs. Apart from the experience that they get uh, on the ground, they also get to benefit from professional development training. And under the digital jobs level, level one, that is the DG1, uh, in this program, we target uh, young people between the ages of 18 to 34. Uh, they need to have basic literacy skills and they must be available for two months because this is the period uh, when we um, train for this program. Uh, they get to acquire different skills, including basic ICT, financial literacy, and work readiness skills. And of course, after um, attaining a 75% uh, attendance, they get to uh, earn a certificate or get awarded a certificate. Yes, and then we have the DJ2, that is Digital Jobs Level 2, uh, where we target youth between 18 to 34. Um, they get to go through our programs for, for two months, so they have to avail themselves for this period. Uh, under the Digital Jobs Level 2 program, we have um, three uh, uh, tracks, that is data analysis using Excel, web development using WordPress, and social media marketing. Um, and finally, under the DB or, or rather the Digital Business Plus ICT program uh, here, we target, of course, youth between age, ages of 18 to 35. They must have a business um, and have access to a smartphone and avail themselves for two months. Uh, through our training, they get to um, acquire different skills, that is digital skills, financial literacy, and other skills that help them grow their businesses. Um, we have the social innovation program, which targets um, 
uh, youth with social enterprises. And we also have the Youth Leadership Advisory Board, which comprises of young men and women that advise our programming. Our Daring to Shift program is funded by Global Affairs Canada, and we are in Nairobi, Mombasa, Western Nyanza, and the Rift Valley region. Yes, uh, you can find us on socials. That is on social on um, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Kenya. And in case you have any questions about our programs or want to um, know more about us, you can send us a message on WhatsApp on 0705-810-200. Or you can send us an email, Kenya at DOT, uh, trust.org or check us, check us out on our website. Back to why we are here today. So Digital Opportunity Trust Kenya is partnering with GIZ. Uh, and through the Gig Economy Mentorship Program, we aim to bring together um, gig workers and gig, um, gig economy experts, uh, specifically women who then come together to um, uh, create strategies for success. And so uh, that is why we are here today and we are so honored to have Anna Waini join us today. Um, if you're here, you probably have seen our poster go around. And so Anna will be sharing uh, with us on how to get started and thrive as a virtual assistant. Uh, Anna, I'll be giving you the mic to tell us more a bit, little bit about yourself, but maybe I can just get started by sharing uh, this uh, brief bio about you. Um, Anna Waini is an executive assistant with more than 15 years experience working in diverse industry from banking, banking to non-for-profit to tech. Uh, she loves to... Uh, she loves what she does because uh, she loves to help people. Um, her career has given her the opportunity to experience uh, various working uh, environments, uh, people interactions, and working styles. Um, so, Anna, we are so glad to have you today. Um, please uh, welcome, and you can just share more about yourself, and then we can proceed from there. Thank you so much, uh, Doreen. Um, sorry, I have a cold, but I'll do for my very best. <laughs> um, so I'm Hannah Waini. Um, just like uh, Dor Doreen has shared, um, I've been working as an executive assistant for very many years. Um, I started in the banking industry where I worked for nine years. I worked in a parastatal uh, that still exists today that does development banking. Um, then I moved to, I went to Dubai briefly for about two years. Uh, we were recruited from here. I worked in the hospitality industry in a very big hotel chain called One and Only Resorts, where I was working in the executive office supporting the hotel manager. Then I came back home. Um, sometimes, you know, you go through job, job searches. So that was my first time to be unemployed for a long period, about four years. Um, I tried to do a few things. Then I went back to working. I did. Uh, I worked in a law firm. Then I worked in a parachurch organization. Then from there now, I worked in a school and then now where I'm working right now. Uh, so how I came to be working as a freelancer, if I can, can call it that, is that in 2020, we all know that COVID came. Nobody expected it. At the time, I was working at a school called Nova Pioneer. I'm sure you've seen the billboards and advertisements on TV and other places. And so I was working as the executive assistant supporting the, the managing director at the time and the, um, the executive leadership team. Um, as the executive assistant. Um, and then uh, we were told in March that we are closing. We are closing the, the, the office we had in Westlands, but we didn't think we were going to lose our jobs. Unfortunately, um, the company reviewed and so they had to let some of us go. And we were about 70 of us, including my boss and many other people, both in, uh, in, our, in, in Kenya and the, the schools in the South Africa, because we also have schools in South Africa. Yeah, so then that's when my job had started. And I remember one time uh, a friend told me about, you know, working online and remotely. And in as much as I'd heard of that, you know, people sometimes even have hybrid formats where some days you are in the office, some days you work from home. I had seen that with my 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 employer at Nova, but I had never experienced it. Um, I always used to feel like working from home is fake. It's not real work. 
those guys are just sitting, lounging, you know, maybe watching TV, enjoying themselves, cooking, eating a lot of food. <laughs> but then when I actually came to work, because so now what happened was I got this job through LinkedIn. And that's why it's very important to take care of your LinkedIn profile, because LinkedIn is like our Facebook, our Instagram. For me, I left Facebook and Instagram because it was taking too much of my time. And that's why when Eric asked me for my Instagram and Facebook, I was like, I don't have them. Like I've sort of deactivated because I was wasting hours and hours going through videos and people are content creating and me, I'm just there watching. So I'm only now on, on uh, Twitter and uh, LinkedIn and YouTube where I just, you know, watch content that I enjoy. Yeah. So yeah. So in December of 2020, I got this job at Upwork, uh, fully remote. Um, and working always from home uh, five days a week, um, 40 hours a week. And so um, for me, of course, it was a bit daunting because I'd never done that. It was a bit scary because I was like, yeah, I don't know what's expected. I had a laptop, yes, but it wasn't like, it, sometimes it was giving me a hard time. So you have to invest in a laptop that's good quality laptop that has a, you know, like um, security, whether it's Kaspersky or whatever. Uh, one other thing that I have learned is I don't use my laptop because of viruses and other things. I don't use any public Wi-Fi. I either hotspot with my phone if I'm somewhere, or I have a Wi-Fi, or I or I um or I use my own home Wi-Fi. You know, because sometimes you know there's always people hacking, trying to steal from you. You know, will get access to your apps even on your phone. And, and that kind of a thing, yeah. So I love what I do. Um, I'm a people person, if I can say that. Not to mean yeah. that I don't also like yeah. downtime when I'm alone, but I really love um, helping people. And though I, I fell into this career kind of, I will say kind of accidentally, but then I found that it's something I really love to do. You know, I don't like really fully always being in the forefront, like, like uh, giving speeches and all those things, but I find I love helping people, hosting people, whether it's in my house or hosting events, organizing that kind of a thing. And so I find that I excel in what I'm doing because of that. And, and that's something I'm going to be talking about uh, a bit later. So if Doreen, you can allow me now, I'll go into my slides and share my screen, okay. if that's okay with you, yeah, so that we can start, uh, we can start. Definitely, go ahead. Thank you. One second, one second, one second. Yeah, so um, so here we are. Uh, so I think one of the first questions to ask yourself when you want to be, let me see if this thing is going to work the way I had. Put it up one second. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, okay. we can hear you. Thank you, Eric. Hi, Asawa. So um, the first thing to always ask yourself, and this is something that I learned um, through the course of my career, is always to ask yourself why, why you're doing whatever you want to do. I think there's somebody talking. Who is that? Can somebody mute? <laughs> yeah, so, so I was saying that... Um, the first thing is always to ask yourself, why, why do you want to do what you want to do? Why do you want to be a virtual assistant? You know, there are hundreds of jobs out there, you know, on the, in the gig space, you can be almost anything. I think the only, and there's a book that I've read that we did, uh, you know, we did some sessions on uh, in my previous place of work um, called Start With Why by someone, Simek, he's someone I, I follow even on YouTube. I like his um, podcasts, I like his videos. And he encourages readers to always begin with the question why when you're embarking on a personal or professional project. Because when you ask why, why am I doing this? You, you will get a lot of answers. Are you doing this because others are doing it? Are you doing it because you have a passion? Are you doing it because you want to earn a lot of money? Are you doing it because um, uh, you've seen other people excel and you want to be like them? You always ask yourself why. And that why is always tied to what I'm going to say next, which is your purpose. Let me... So when you're defining your why, um, it is important to look at certain things. And for me, how I established my personal why was, in fact, I should have uh, shown you my vision board and my, my, my personal why. 
was we went through some sessions, we did some skill tests, some skills tests. I'm going to share with you the resources that I've used in coming slides. And then I also asked my colleagues and associates, what do I do well, where do I excel? Um, you can find, for example, you are very good at organizing, but you're an accountant. But because no one has given, ever given you the opportunity to do that, um, you don't know that you have that skill. And sometimes another thing you can do is get out of your comfort zone. Like for example, um, if you feel you're passionate about something, we've heard of bankers who left their jobs to go and do bakery and they're excelling in it. We've heard of people who were, were engineers and now they're doing maybe project management and they're excelling in it or purchasing or something else. And it's because they got out of their comfort zone. So one thing to do is, is to do a skills test. When you do a skills test, it will tell you and, and you should not, when you're doing any test, don't overthink it. Don't think of, a, of the best answer. Always answer the first quest, the first thing that comes to your mind and write that down because that's the truest, because that comes from your subconscious. It's not, you're not trying to, to tailor, make it into something. And when you do that, you'll find that um, you'll be able to identify who you are. Another way to do that is to ask people, um, ask colleagues, um, ask, um, I don't encourage asking friends and family members because they'll always give you a biased opinion. Uh, you know, where Hannah unakuanga ivi, you know, you know, so and so unakuanga ivi, you know, it may not be always like, um, it has a lot of bias. There's a bit of emotionality on it, but if you ask somebody to, to tell you as a colleague, someone who works with you, it could be a peer, it could be your boss, it could be a junior, you know, you know, somebody will come and tell you, you are very good at organizing, you know, you are actually fantastic at presenting ideas or, or uh, handling events or communicating, your writing skills are on point or something of the sort. And then you write that down because again, when people tell you, give you feedback, it's important to take that feedback. And if you have a notebook, write it down, so that when the time comes, you can create your, your personal why. And, and sometimes it's good to, to create it either as a slide or have something printed out. I did that for myself. And um, for me, when I discovered, and that's why I say I like helping people, I discovered that my personal why is serving, you know, serving God and serving others. And when I found I enjoy serving, I don't, I mean, even if I, I give you an example, as a firstborn, we are always called upon to help our parents. Like my mom would always drag me to the kitchen to cook. And, um, and of course, yes, I did home science in high school, but then I also found that because of that, I don't find that, I don't find it challenging to serve people. Like when we have events, I will organize and I will say, okay, this is what we are going to eat. These are the people we are going to invite. These are how the cards are going to look and that kind of a thing. So it's very important to do a test, to review yourself and ask people. And then also a self-analysis. And that's why I've said, uh, what, do you, what do you do? What do you enjoy doing without being asked? What do people have to drag you away from? And let's forget about things like, I like watching movies. I, I like this, this, that, the other. No, things that are sort of like a hobby, something that you find, like, for example, if you, if you, if you like sports and you can spend one whole day, I'm not saying gaming for the men, I'm talking about like, for example, playing the sport itself, like whether it's basketball or football and that kind of a thing, that's something that you really enjoy. What activities make you lose track of time that you, when you're, when you're engrossed in them, you're, you're not feeling bored, you don't get tired of doing it. And what would you do for free? For example, serving people for me, I can do it for free because I love it. I don't need an incentive because sometimes uh, when it comes to compensation like money, um, it means you need an incentive to actually do what you're doing. Yeah, so, so it's very important to identify your personal why using any of these, uh, either all of them or or um, all of either all of them or one of these um, tests. Then again, another important thing is to know that your, your why is always tied into your purpose. And for me, as I told you, mine is is service. And then and I found that uh, my purpose is serving people. And I found that in in all the places that I've done, I've worked. You know, service to God, service to others, and um, helping people is a huge service for me and is a big thing for me. It's a big deal. And that's why it says um, your purpose is your objective, the reason why something exists, its usefulness and its value. Because for example, if you look at a camera, with the old cameras we used to have before we, were, we had them on our phones, the camera was there to take pictures and videos, that's its intrinsic purpose. And, and when you tie your why to your purpose, like I'm doing this because this is my purpose about this, because you will not find um, somebody being in, even people, other people who we also consider like helping people are people like nurses and doctors. They might say, say, I find I want to help people to get better. 
or to be in good health. And a nutritionist would say that, um, somebody else would say, you know, I like beautiful things, so I like taking photographs. And so that's why I'm saying that uh, and, and in the same way that our lives have meaning as a Christian, I believe that uh, we are created in the image of God and he has a purpose for our existence. We are not just here by chance or by, by accident, you know. And in the same way, our careers have a purpose and a meaning and we should pursue a career that meets our life's purpose, not because it is the latest fad or makes the most money, but because it's intrinsically tied to your purpose. And when we follow our heart, you know, it may take time. Like, like if you think of somebody who is a, maybe a stone mason, you know, they earn very little money, but you find he doesn't feel like the, maybe, he, maybe for him that is the only job that he can do. But then you might find he also could have had other options of doing something. But then he might do that and then grow into a foreman, grow even into somebody now who is a well-known builder. And so at the beginning of our careers, we may not always get the money that we want. You know, sometimes I'm fascinated to see that um, different generations will ask for different amounts of money. You know, like somebody will come and say, I want you to start paying me 100,000 and you've come straight from college or university and you don't have the experience. And I know sometimes people feel that, oh, you know, experience is overrated, but it's not overrated. If you think about our experience, like the things you've gone through. Um, can somebody mute? <laughs> Yeah, so so when you think about our 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 purpose, um, wow. we real, we realize that um, we realize that it should be always tied to our career. And don't worry about the money. As I say, the money will come eventually. You know, with time. What we should work on is once you found your why and you you've tied it to your purpose, is to then put put your best foot forward and and do your best and be the best in what you're doing. And the money will come eventually. So as I've said, um, this is just a recap. So identify your why, um, um, see what career aligns with it, um, sharpen your skills if you don't have what it takes to start that career. For example, if you're wanting to get into graphic design, for example, and you don't know how to use some of the tools, maybe in design or another tool that is used, or even the latest tools that are used to um, do graphic design, then you can enroll in a course. You know, there are many courses um, that are either you pay very little money, like for example, there's a course I'm doing now and all I've been paying, I've paid is 1,800 shillings. You can spare that and do that course and get that certification in that course. And then another good thing is to get a, get a mentor and learn from them. Like sometimes it's even, even you can identify someone in the place of work you are mm -hmm. and uh, tell them, you know, I'm interested in, uh, in growing my career. I wanted to know how can I get this? And if I can give you an example, when I was starting out, um, there's a lady who's still a, a friend today. And she's the one who mentored me, who told me how to carry myself because I was straight from college. I didn't know how, what it was entailing. And I was working in a bank, it was a big bank. And she talked to me, she helped me both, you know, giving me like, you know, soft skill ideas and also had, you know, the hard skills I already had, you know, whether it's the typing, uh, organizing and that kind of a thing, managing schedules. And then she was able to, to walk me until I was comfortable enough. I think it took about two, three months. I was comfortable enough. And then I was able to um, get into um, serving, um, attached to somebody to support. And in the same way, you can also get a mentor who either somebody you admire, who is reachable. We are not talking about like go and, and look for the president's wife or somebody who's out of reach. I'm saying somebody within your circle, you know who that person is. It could be somebody you've admired in LinkedIn. It could be a person you work with. Um, whoever it is that you admire, that you know can help you with your skills. And I know most people fear, but when you ask directly, you'll be very surprised. Most people will say yes, and they will help you. And then for us who are seeking um, opportunities in, in, um, in, um, in a gig, for me, I can only speak about Upwork. And I, I also told uh, Eric that I'm not coming here to represent Upwork. You know, there are also legal um, issues sometimes when you come and say I'm representing. All I can do is speak about how I've excelled and, um, and what you can do maybe to join Upwork. So the next thing would, for you would be to maybe sign up uh, to Upwork. Um, which for me, I believe is the world's ma uh, work marketplace, the best place where you can get uh, online jobs. There are lots of virtual assistant jobs and other uh, uh, similar online jobs that you can get. Um, I don't know if anyone has any questions up there um, before I get into something else. Yes, any Anna. Questions? 
Yes, tell me. Uh, thank you so much for that great presentation up to this point. I think um, mm -hmm. one of the things I've picked is you have to ask yourself why. Mm -hmm. Find your purpose and uh, ensure that you are upskilling. But mm -hmm. um, I'm just curious to know, maybe there's someone here who does not even mm -hmm. have a clue on who a virtual assistant is. So you can get mm -hmm. started on that. On that. Uh, mm -hmm. Help us understand who is a virtual assistant. What does it uh, uh, cost or what are some mm -hmm. of the you need to become a virtual assistant okay so um of course virtual means not in person that's the first thing to decipher about that and of course assistants have come a long way you know when we started out like myself when i started we were called secretaries sometimes stenographers copy typists i don't know what and all an assistant does is an assistant is always going to be attached to, to a department or to a person to an individual and if you are attached to a department, for example, you might have another assistant who is senior to you, for example, an executive assistant and yourself, you are an administrative assistant. And what you do, what is some of the things that I've written here, you know, about managing calendars and schedules, um, managing teams, for example, if there are events coming up um, or if there's feedback to be collected after an event, you are the one to organize, you are the one to collect information from the team if there's something that is being asked of you. And so an assistant, generally speaking, is somebody who's always attached to either a department or a person, an individual. It could be a CEO or a, a, CX, a CXO. A CXO is anyone who is chief of something, whether it's the chief of staff or whether it's a, you know, a chief legal officer or chief human resource person or that kind of a thing. And then what their day-to-day -day work entails is just the same thing I've said, you know, managing uh, schedules. For example, um, make, making sure that meetings are, uh, are organized and um, within the, the, the time frame. For example, if your boss says, um, I need to meet so-and-so uh, within this week, it's for you to look at their schedule and see what is the available time that they have and then schedule and then ask how many, which other people are supposed to be there? What's the objective of the meeting? All those things, those are managing schedules. Sometimes it seems like it's a very small thing, but it's it's it can be difficult because um, there are so many completing priorities. For example, if you're setting up schedules or a, or a meeting with not just the core team but cross-functional partners, it means you have to wrestle to find time that works not just for your for your boss and um, and the core team, but for other people who are in other departments. And don't forget, they also have their goals and objectives of the work they are doing. Uh, and, and so does the core team that you are supporting. And so it's all those things. We moved away from those things of serving tea and that kind of a thing. But um, it also you, you also handle projects. For example, there could be something that is ongoing. Um, if you have a conference, you could be called upon to set up the conference. You know, something sometimes they call those who do in-person work secretariat where you make sure uh, the room is booked. If it's a hotel room, if people are traveling, you make sure you book their flights. Um, those days when we were do, doing COVID testing, you make sure people have been tested for COVID, uh, especially if you're going out of the country, you make sure their passports are, uh, or are, are up to date, have the pages that need to be stamped. So it's everything, travel arrangements, you know, from hotel bookings to uh, airport transfers, like moving people from the airport to the hotel where they are going. Uh, you know, giving an agenda of the day, for example, if the conference, if whoever is at the keynote speakers that they know what they have, they, you have the projector and any other tools that they need, if they need a whiteboard, um, you make the arrangement of the room according to how many people are there. If it's a big room, you'll obviously be sitting conference style, or you could be sitting you style, or you could be sitting facing each other, that kind of a thing, um, to things like, for example, managing expenses, um, whether it's expenses, personal expenses of the boss when they travel, you know, making sure that those expenses are submitted for reimbursement, or if it is team expenses, like if a team member has undertaken a training, then uh, help them to do the expenses. Um, it's all those things, you know, and communication. And then, of course, another major thing that assistants do is communicating um, in terms of, for example, um, in, in a meeting, you'll be asked to take meeting notes and then follow up with action items. Like action items are just things that need to be done. Like for example, if, if let's say you meet your friend and you, say, you sit down and uh, you, you have your coffee or your, or your lunch or whatever it is, then maybe whether it is just for, if it's for fun, then it's for fun. But if for example, you sit down and there's something that you're planning and we say, oh, by the way, we wanted to, to buy a plot at this and this location, 
I, I think let's let's now go to this place. Have you identified some people that you want us to meet? Those are action items. You know, there are things that come out of a meeting that need to be worked on, you know, that have a, you know, either an end date and an end goal. For example, if your CEO comes and says, I've noticed there's this problem in this area, it's for you people to sit down, brainstorm, and come up with action items to resolve that issue. So those are the kinds of things. And why over here in communication, I've said uh, writing, reading, listening, understanding is because um, most of us don't listen to understand. We listen to reply or to respond or to share our ideas. But as an assistant, one of the major things that will make you successful is to learn how to listen and listening to understand. And, and one thing that I can always, I always encourage people is ask questions. You know, if you'd rather ask and ask and ask and, and seem like you're a nag rather than assume, because a lot of people, what they say is, um, and if I give you an example, sometimes your boss can write something and it's not making sense. The, you, there's no way without asking for elaboration, you can understand what they meant because they could have had five things going on and maybe some of the ideas from this other thing has popped into this and they've written. Now, if you don't ask for understanding so that you can action whatever they require of you to do, you are really going to have a hard time. And so for me, one of the things I say is asking questions. So in a nutshell, um, I hope I've, I've explained uh, Doreen what an assistant does and what a day looks like. I mean, there are people who still serve tea, um, who still do personal things like take the laundry. Like if you are a personal assistant, sometimes you'll be asked to do that. There's a time I was a personal assistant and I would be asked to, for example, arrange for my boss's house to be cleaned um, or arrange for her car to be serviced or uh, you know, get her vendor to buy something that she needs, that kind of a thing. So those that's personal because it has nothing to do with the organization. Um, sometimes you'll be asked to do that, sometimes you will not. Most of the time as a virtual assistant, you might get a client who will ask you to do personal things, maybe organize my son's birthday party or organize my, my, my anniversary or something of the sort. Um, still that is assistant work and you can do it. Um, and that's why I'm saying that uh, um, work, I mean, all these people we see, whether it is people like presidents, whether we see celebrities and, and celebrities like in the US, you know, they will always have assistants. Sometimes they will have more than one assistant. They will have a personal assistant. They will have a communications person, that kind of a thing. Yeah. So you, it's work. That is the kind of work that it entails. I know sometimes they call it admin work. Because admin work has everything, you know, from uh, projects to events to organizing to to uh, managing schedules to communicating. Sometimes you'll be right to, asked to write articles. There's a time I I was in charge of of uh, of, of publishing a, a magazine that we had, and sometimes I was called upon to write articles. And for example, if you're not good in writing, um, that could be difficult for you. And and how you can gain a skill in writing is in reading, just reading books, listening to podcasts listening to how people talk about di different things that uh, increases your ability to write. Um, I don't know if there's any other question, Doreen or anyone else needs a clarification on that. I think Doreen, 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 Doreen. sorry, let's. So let's yeah. Yes, Petronila. The questions the in the question chat. The chat. Let's uh, wait because I can't see the chat. Yeah. Eh? We question the chat. Huh? Mm -hmm. Can you tell me the question? Because I'm not able to see the chat as I as I present. Yeah, you can finish up Anna first and then we'll okay. take the questions up. Finish up your, okay. your presentation and then we'll we'll take questions. Okay, good. Yeah. So as I outlined previously, those are the hard skills that you require. Um some you need some training, you know, like management courses being good at typing, those are some of the things, being a tech in terms of being able to use different various uh, tools, Microsoft, G Suite, and whatever other tools like your client or your organization would demand for you to use. Uh, most of the time, if you don't have, you, if you don't know how to use a, a, a particular tool, it's always open, it's always good for you to say upfront that you don't know, but you can learn because most of these tools are not that difficult. They are not so technical that you can't use them. I said simple accounting skills, event management, project management, communication. Then the other thing that people sometimes um, for lack of a better word, tunapuza is the human skills or soft skills. And this is like emotional intelligence, listening, 
a bias to action that is being a self-starter, curiosity, care for people, and interest in the work of industry. So emotional intelligence, for example, is just reading the atmosphere. Um, you see, when we, when, we, when we are interacting with people, there, there's, you can look at verbal, you can see audio, you can listen to the tone, you can listen to the facial expressions, you can listen to the guests, you can look at the gestures and see, is this person afraid? Are they confident? Are they angry? Are they upset? You know, and it is good to read, to, to have emotional intelligence. In fact, most people say you recruit for attitude and character more than the other things because other things can be taught. But you can't teach somebody to have a good attitude, for example. You can't teach somebody to, to be kind, to be understanding, to be positive. Those things you can't teach. And all those things fall under emotional intelligence. Listening is another very important thing. Listening to understand, listening to your peers, and even listening in a meeting. Sometimes, like for example, you'll be asked to sit in, in big meetings, board meetings. In my previous job, I used to list, sit with the, with the leadership team. And, and they would talk about sometimes very sensitive things, financial things. Sometimes they would talk about HR issues and all those things, number one, you're supposed to keep them confidential. But when you listen, you can also see where the heart of the boss is, where the, the company is headed to, those kinds of things and understand better. And all those things help you to do your work better. Bias to action, when you're doing virtual work, you will not have your boss managing you by walking around. You know, we've heard of that thing, managing by walking around, hey, what are you doing right now? Hey, wapi? like that. You will not have a boss who will do that. Your boss will set the expectations and expect you to perform. And that is why I was saying, ask questions. If your boss says, I want this and this done, always find out, especially if it's a new client, by when, you know, is this urgent? Is this for next week? Is this something that I should be working on? Do I have three days, one day, one hour, 30 minutes to do this? Being, and that's why I'm saying being a self-starter, being proactive, people call it also being proactive, will really help you because nobody is going to come and tell you, I want you to do this. I want you to wake up and do the work at this time. For me, because I work with people who are based in the US, I mostly work up at night. So sometimes I'll be awake and working until 1 a.m. Nobody will tell me I need to work until 1 a.m. The work will dictate. And that's why if I'm not a self-starter and I don't have a bias to action, I will never be able to do my work. Another thing is curiosity, asking questions, wanting to know the company, reading and listening to what's going on, listening to even the technical things that have nothing to do with your job. They're important. Listen to them, understand what the company is doing. Ask your boss to explain. Sometimes we have had projects that, that are going on and I, I don't know really what is going on. And I will ask my boss. And in fact, they feel so proud to talk about it because it's their baby. It's something that they're working on. Another thing is care for people. You, you must, as a, an assistant, you must always be ready to take the back seat. I'm, I'm not saying um, letting people take credit for your work. No, no, no. I don't mean that. But I mean taking the back seat that you're not there to compete with your boss. You're not there to outshine your boss. Like, number one, you should never try to outshine the master. That's a, a known rule. I think in the 48 laws of life, or rules of life, there's a book called that. There is, you cannot outshine the master, you know? Um, you cannot try to kind of outdo your boss, even if you know more than your boss. There are clever ways to, to bring up that same issue. Like if they have uh, information or statistics that are wrong, then you can correct them, but you don't need to correct them, number one, in front of people or in a way that just say, oh, by the way, I actually found out it is not 500, it's 600. That's a clever way of doing it. You have not embarrassed them and they'll be, oh, thank you, Hannah, for that. And, and, and even if it's not in public, you can do that. And that's why I'm saying caring for people is, is letting other people, also letting other people shine. When they shine, you shine. When your boss is doing well, you think you'll not get a bonus. You'll get a bonus, you'll get a promotion. Your name will be in their lips saying how this person is a fantastic person. They are helping me. So care for people and helping people is very important. The last thing is interest in the work and in the industry. Always um, find it, wanting to find out what is the latest that's happening. Um, in the world of, of assistance or in the world of the virtual assistance space. And even in the industry in terms of if whatever company you're working for, is it healthcare, is it uh, tech, is it a school? Um, what are the important things? What, are, what is the goal and the mission? I've seen Dot has shared with us the, the goal and the mission. And something that I picked up is the disadvantage for people who don't have the reach. Maybe they don't have um, the tools or the skills and, and that's a very important mission and vision. And so 
when you have interest in their work and in the industry, then you will go even further because uh, what you will be showing your employer is that you have interest and you're committed to what you're doing. Um, then the other thing is, um, I will share this. These are links on the on the left are some links um, how to get started on Upwork. Um, um, I don't know about other platforms, so I can only talk about Upwork. These are things we are allowed to share. Uh, if you can look at this um, Upwork in demand skills of 2023, this is something I picked from LinkedIn. Um, you can see there, is, there, there are lots of uh, jobs, um, not just virtual assistant. There is um, graphic design, which is in terms of, of, um, of um, creativity. Um, there is a, a customer service where you know the call center, virtual assistant, data entry, digital project management. There are all kinds of jobs, accounting, recruiting and talent uh, sourcing. Um, even there are people who do coaching, there are people who do writing. So there's lots of um, opportunities on the platform. And what I will do with, um, with the Petronila, Eric and, and Doreen is I will share these specific links that I have for those who want to sign up onto the platform, Upwork platform, and get started. You know, there are videos, there are, there are, there are, there are step by step, step um, things you can follow and get yourself started. Um, and then um, these are just you know, resources um, that I will also share. I talked about personality and skills tests earlier on. These are personality tests that I myself have done, like the Myers Briggs, the 16 personality uh, factor questionnaire. Those are things I'm going to share. And these are some of the books that I have read and succeeded because they were they were doing a specific thing that they pre they were doing something and they analyzed and they saw there is a market for this. Why don't we try, you know, a platform where people can watch the material they want because people no longer use the VHS and they don't want to use the disc and they don't want to use a USB to watch movies. So content on demand, you know, those kinds of things. And so that book was very helpful to me. It's something that I refer to. The others are kind of, apart from purpose-driven life, are all um, sort of career-based career books. The five dysfunctions of a team are fantastic. You know, we, we talk about, you know, you know, forming, norming, storming, and performing, you know, those kinds of things. The One Minute Manager was a book that my dad used to read, and I ended up reading it myself. Uh, Start with Why, Find Your Why, Simon Sinek is a book that I've talked about. Um, and then I love Eat That Frog. Eat That Frog, I didn't read the book, but I listened to the audio book. It's fantastic, especially in this busy life, you know, about cutting off distractions um, and, and achieving and accomplishing in your workplace, even if it's a personal project that you have. For example, when they say Eat That Frog, the most important, the most visible, most important, most difficult, the, the task that sometimes is the most difficult is the most impactful. So when you're prioritizing, um, because we always look at importance versus urgency, when you are prioritizing, when we say eat that frog, it is the most, the, 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 the task or the project that is the most difficult, but the most impactful. Um, something that will have a great impact, whether it's in metrics, whether it's in revenue for an organization, is the thing that you should always start with or the thing that you have, that you have both values. If you know you have both values, having a calendar that is perfect, clean, well organized, then do that thing and make sure that that is the thing that you go and then go down in the priority list. So that's a very good book as well. Um, and then Purpose Driven is just, a, is just a book as a Christian that I have also read. I know also, you know, people who are not, not Christians, who are non-Christians have also read it. It's by Rick Warren, it's a very good book about finding your purpose. And that's why I said that none of us is living on this earth, you know, without uh, a value or without a uh, purpose. We are all created in the image of God and we, we have intrinsic purpose in, six to seven in our lives, yeah. And yeah, so that's it for me. I think there's nothing, uh, these are the last the book recommendations I have. Uh, if you want, we can connect, I can share my email and, uh, you know, I'll talk to Eric and the others and they can tell me if they need uh, my LinkedIn and, uh, and yeah, and, um, and, and, and then we can connect and if anyone wants, has more questions or they want to interact with me, uh, feel free. Yeah, so that's the end of my presentation. I hope I was helpful and that uh, uh, those who are going to embark on the life of being virtual assistants will succeed. And if you have any questions on even how to get started, let me know.
Thank you so much, Anna. Uh, yes, mm -hmm. we have questions. And please, before we answer the questions, I'd like us all to just uh, clap for Anna. That was a great, great, great presentation. Uh, please, there's an emoji uh, reactions uh, right at the bottom. Just press a clap for Anna. That was very, very, very great, Anna. Thank you so much for that great presentation. Um, uh, we have questions on the chat, and I know time is not on our side, so we'll just try to answer this briefly. Um, looking back at your first day at Upwork, the very first day you signed on Upwork and um, the very first time you got your client up to now, how has the experience been like and have you experienced any challenges? And you can also share with us how you have um, worked to overcome these challenges. Okay, so of course the first thing was the time zone difference. That was the first thing that I, I was a bit worried about because um, you know, we are about 10, 10 or 11 hours, depending on whether we are doing daylight saving time, because the US, they have daylight saving time, depending on the season. Um, like now we are back to normal. Um, we are away from the daylight saving. Um, and so the, the hour comes, it's switched back by one hour. So one of the main things that I was worried about was, uh, you know, number one, you know, will they understand my English, you know, because I'm speaking with a Kenyan accent if I can call it that, and the American accent, then time zone uh, fear differences, because like we are about 10, 11 hours away from the US, depending on what is the time zone, because there are about four or five time zones in the US. I won't go into them now, the Pacific Eastern, the earliest is Eastern time, which is like now already, now they're already around um, morning hours, -ish kind of, um, Eastern, Mountain, Central, Pacific, uh, Hawaii time, I don't know if it's still the same year. So that was the other challenge. And then the fear was, will, will we understand each other? Like, will they understand me and will I understand them? Um, will their English be too difficult? You know, those were the, 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 the small worries, you know. Another big worry, <laughs> which seems a little ashamed, is Kenya Power and Lighting Company. Hmm? Hey, Kenya Power, waneza kukulet down vibaya sana. And so one, that was one of the other problems I had especially when I was living at another place because the, the you know, power would go out where I was living, there was no generator. Um, and so when when steamer goes out, it would be like, oh my God, now I'm sunk. Even I remember one time having a, a, a meeting in a, I went and told the caretaker, hey, Akinyaga, nitaftia two room, najwa kuna haumoja ina mtu. Please, yo nyumba ikona, because we now had, I don't know if you guys have experienced that thing of, of line. You know where some houses have steamer, other houses don't have steamer. Sasa wezi enda kwa nyumba ya mtu, wanaji enjoy, they are watching nine o'clock news, wendo ukayapo ati nikona meeting, please mtanyamaza. So what did I do? I went to the caretaker the, at the time, he was called Nyaga, I told him Nyaga nilasikia kuna nyumba, ikona nini, ikona steamer. Please naeza katu kwa hiyo room. So he went, he got me, I got my bulbs from my house. I went to that house, I put bulbs. I put on my nini, although it was still a bit dark. So my boss was like, are you okay? Are you in a cave? Where are you? What's going on? Then I was like, we don't have power. <laughs> and I remember the following day, I went to I went to a mall to go and look for a power bank for my laptop, but I've never even found one. They are very hard to come by and they are very expensive. Like they range between 12,000 and 21,000. Like they are really, really expensive. So I'm always like, can your power please? You know, it was like, yeah, the way you're saying gory, yeah, you know, like it was really horrible. Yeah, so that was one of the challenges. So one thing that I did is I would just tell my bosses, like I'm having a problem with power. And then I also look at my laptop and see how much can I work if I see I have two hours on the laptop and Kabisa steamer doesn't need me. I like that Mariana UPS, I look for one. Um, I would then now just tell them. And so those are the issues. You see, those are our own Kenyan problems, you know. Uh, out there, they also have power problems. Like if they have a hurricane or a tornado or a very bad storm, their, their lights also go out and they won't have internet. But then also it's being clever. For example, if, if, you, if you're trying to spare the charge on your laptop so that you use the laptop to work, you can log on on the phone. Like if you have a Zoom call or a Google Hangout, use your phone if, if you can do that. And, and even tell them, you know, to, for example, if you use video, you use more power. So you tell them, I, I can't be on video. I, you know, I'm trying to spare the power. And then you switch off. 
you know, yeah, so those kinds of things. So those are some of the challenges that I, you know, I overcame. And then um, one of the things how I over, overcame the fear of will they understand me is, is over communicating, like making sure you see now when you're dealing with people who are not Kenyans, you can't write with Kenyan language. Any Kenyan mixed with Kiswahili, ati unaniget, you know, like tunailawana, you know, like like that. Like it has to be pure, the better English that you learned in primo. Ile kizungu kabisa ile. Ile aina colloquialisms and and uh, vitu zingine hivyo hivyo, you know, you get, you know, no, mm, proper English. Do you understand me? You know, like that. And so that's another way that I over, overcame that. And I remember one of my bosses was like, Ati, you communicate so well. I was like, mm, yes, I communicate so well. Watch an itarudi tuki swahili tu sai, watch a tumalizei call. You know? Yeah, so it's that kind of um, English, your group of schools. Yo yenye imeomoka. Ile kabisa. Yo sasa ndio unafa kuongea. Yeah, so it's, that, it's those kinds of things. Yeah, over communicating, asking questions. Um, 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 if you don't understand, for example, if it's an email, um, um, you know, um, like, like, like read to understand, like if you, if even an email is very complicated, for instance, asking so many things, read it, take, leave it, go back, read again. If you are new in your work, write the points. They have asked for this, they have asked for this, they have asked for this. Very good. Have I understood where do I need to get this like that? For, for us who are a bit more experienced, sometimes it's very fast to respond. You know, you'll read it once, twice, leave it. You can also save a draft. You can also look at email replies. Now we have Google. There's no harm in Googling as long as you're not plagiarizing. Like you're not picking information like we and article, then you go and pick from somewhere and then copy paste. No, but you can Google. If you don't know how to do something, Google is your best friend. YouTube is your best friend. You can see quick videos, two minute videos, five minute videos and get to know what you, you, you have to do. And then also sometimes if you have an understanding client or boss, believe you me, they will be willing to show you. Like I remember even there's a time when I was organizing an event and I was so worried, I was scatterbrained all over the place. And my boss told me, calm down, just take a book, write, write what are the components? You need hotel, you need flights, you need to know what is the budget, how many people are coming, you transport. You once you know that you sit down, you write a, you you create a tracker. A tracker can even be just a checklist. Unandika flights for fifteen people, passports. Do they have passports? You know that kind of a thing. So sometimes even your boss, depending on who they are, because that's why I was saying use your emotion, emotional intelligence to judge. Kuna watu akali wakikwambia fanya ivi ata kuelaboratia. Even there's a boss I used to have. Why mkali? When you go and ask him something, he's like ati. I'm not here to tell you how to do your job, my dear. If you don't know, that's up to you. I'm like, guy, Jehovah. So that way you go now to somebody else, like now who you know if it's an organization and as a cuckoo's idea. Yeah, but asking questions, um, researching, those are things that will help you to overcome any hurdles that you face here. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for that. Um, someone is asking here, and this is also a question I had in mind for you. Uh, I think on Upwork, I'm not sure mm -hmm. about other platforms, but uh, one thing we've uh, heard about Upwork is getting your first client. Mm -hmm. So maybe you can also just very briefly share with us how did you hack that? Um, so uh, the resources I have will better explain. Um, um, because usually, like the, the biggest thing that I told, I tell you, the first thing is have a very good LinkedIn profile. Linked people no longer look at CVs, will tell you bring your CV. And even now, people have moved away from your CVs. They ask for a resume, which is a one-page document. You know, you know, if if an engineer doesn't have a 12-page CV, you who you kwanini unapena 12-page, peana two-page moja. But the most, one of the most critical things, like especially when I now left Nova and I was now looking for a job, is to create a very good profile and be real. Don't, don't go and plagiarize, copy paste other people's profiles, no. What I did was, for example, if I give you practically, I sat at my desk and I said, if I want to attract Muzungu, how will I do it? Is speak in their language. If you see the first sentence in my, in my profile, it says, I am a, are you looking for an a assistant? I'm the man for the job. And I put man in quotes, you know, brings a little bit of humor and that kind of a thing. And 
you know, it came from research and that kind of a thing. And I'm not saying my profile is perfect. In fact, I need to update it a little bit. But working on your LinkedIn is very helpful. You can get um, ideas from other people's LinkedIn's and see this is what they have. Um, let the information be up to date, let it be truthful, ask for endorsements, people you've worked with, let them endorse you, let them endorse your skills, say you're good at event planning, you're good at managing teams, you're good at communicating, um, and ask them to even write you a review, like they'll write you and it will appear, and when people are searching, like recruiters are always looking, Eric found me on LinkedIn, me when I didn't know anything about DOT, I knew DOT about DOT, <laughs> Sorry to, to use that, Nini, no pun intended, but yeah, I knew dot about dot. But somebody, um, you know, Eric saw and maybe saw, maybe this is a person who can help in mentorship or something. And so create a fantastic LinkedIn profile because when clients are now going to, um, um, going to look for you, they will look for you on LinkedIn and see what is your presence? How do you interact? What have you done? What do you do? You know, what is your you know, your, 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 what does your presence show them? And then the other thing is setting up your profile. Now that is technical. I can't go into the step-by-step, step, but it is number one, be very truthful about your skills. You'd rather start down there by doing data entry and research and doing call center work than telling them I'm an experienced VA. Then they give you the job and you fail because on Upwork, there's something that is called a job success score, GSS score. How clients continue to give you work is if you have a good job success score. And a job success score is just the, the doing a good job and completing it, doing a good job and completing it, you know, whether it's a one month job, three month job, six month job, that kind of a thing. And so once you have a good LinkedIn profile, you, pre you create your profile on, uh, on, uh, on, uh, on, uh, on Upwork, follow those. There are some academic courses that we give to people to use. You, you do that, set it up then make sure you don't give up because the only challenge that, that there is is that uh, is visibility, especially when jobs are, have, have more demand, you know, have, are oversupply in oversupply. Like for example, this customer service, you know, because they are not technical, many people can train themselves and do that work. Um, then sometimes there could be an oversupply. And so you might feel discouraged and say, oh, but I've not gotten my cli a client, I'm struggling. So when you get your first client, hear me out, make sure you work to prove yourself kabisa. Because this person does not know you, does not know kuna Kenya power in a letanga short, doesn't know kuna, kuna issues in Guinea, nini wala nini, doesn't know their Wi-Fi issues. I know Wi-Fi is not cheap. So sometimes you might have to hotspot do your best job if you don't know ask and if you know you have a kind of difficult boss client then make sure you do your research talk to other in fact network with other vas and here what, what i've been asked to do this nifanyaje you know there's this tool wana to me miss juk to me tool nifanyaje go to youtube quickly learn ask questions review i'm telling you asking is always going to save you nobody you can't come and ask somebody even beggars see what kuna professional beggars wana kuanga kwa hiyo street killer asubuhi from monday monday to monday na huyo mtu akikwambia chakula na umebeba chakula hata kama uko na njaa na gani utampea tu out of maybe even shame because unaona eh maze watu wananiona acha tu nimpe lakini nasikia njaa na nasikia kauchungu lakini ni sawa tu asking will always have you get the answers that you need. Ask others, network with other people. And that's why I was even saying mentors are very good. Mentors are even somebody who is a, a guru in Excel. Like me, I'm now struggling to be an expert in Excel. That person who is an accountant you know who works in your company or who you know, a brother, a cousin, or somebody, they'll show you, you become an expert. And then once you get that client, prove yourself. Always under promise and over deliver. Under promise, over deliver. Don't give false promises. Don't say I can, I can do graphic design. I can do, do what? You'd rather do the least and you succeed in that and then you get your next job. Remember, we are trying to get a very good job success score so that we can keep landing work and keep getting new clients. All right. Oh, that was very uh detailed um mm. i think we are out of time but i will give a chance to three questions so one um there's a question on um 
uh, how to get virtual jobs, um, how to get this uh, jobs as a virtual assistant. And then uh, we'll give two more people to ask their questions live. Uh, please ensure that your background is really um, not um, disruptive. And yeah, so if you have a question, please raise your hand. I think other questions, uh, Anna, people can reach out to you on LinkedIn. You can drop your, your um, what is it called? Your link, the link to your profile on the chat. If it's somewhere, you can drop it or I can look at it very fast and drop it in the chat uh, so that people are able to to connect with you and you, if you have a question that you feel like we have not responded to in this room you can go ahead and connect with Anna and ask her or maybe yeah ask for more information that you may need we'll also be sharing Anna's uh, slides uh, to everyone who, are, who registered for this event so uh, please uh, do not be worried about that so uh, and we also offer training on data analysis Anna so you're welcome to join our programs uh, we we, we, we offer training on data analysis using Excel, so you can join our programs. Yes, please share with us, um, what are these platforms? Where can we get jobs as virtual assistants? You're on mute, Anna, I can't hear you. I was saying that, um, 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 but I can only speak on Upwork. I, I don't know about other platforms and how they operate. And that's why I said, uh, but the, the, the thing that I know is that any virtual job, you need to succeed while you're using that platform, okay? For example, with Upwork, I've told you about the job success score, the GSS score, because you know why, why that is very important is because you can't give your outside experience outside of the platform and say you are successful. You know, the client wants to know that, okay, on this platform, because you are virtual, have you been successful or not? Are you able to finish the work that I asked you to do? Do you even have the competency and the skills to do the work that I've asked of you? You know, leave even before payments and all these other things. And so um, one of the most important things, and as I told you, I'll just reiterate the same thing. And, and what we'll now do is that I'll share those, uh, the links, uh, later on um, for how to get started on Upwork in terms of uh, creating a profile, your portfolio, if you're doing other work like graphic design or if you take, you do photography and that kind of a thing, because there's so much work, not just for virtual assistants that you can do um, on the platform. And then when you get started, it also tells you how to get, a, how to get, how to land your first client, you know, a step-by-step -step process. And uh, when you get your clients, how to keep them, how to keep getting work. Um, I know of people who have gotten, who have worked when they, I know of a guy, I think he has been on the platform for so much longer than me, like five, six, seven years. And, you know, he has kept growing. And he said, in fact, what has happened is that he has kept working with the same people because of the success rate that he has had. So one of the most important things, as I told you, is uh, under promise and over deliver. Never go and, and talk about something that you're not able to do just talk about what you're able to do and do that. And as you keep growing, you know, because we keep growing in our careers, um, then as you aspire, when you gain a new skill and you're confident you can do it, then you say, I can do this. Like, for example, I can't say I'm a the law interpreter and I'm learning the law. No, I, I, I'm going to fail. If they give me a very difficult um, uh, article to, 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 uh, to interpret or to, uh, I will fail. And so that's why I'm saying one of the most important things is to under, under promise and over deliver and then uh, work on the, for me, I cannot speak about other, other um, platforms. I can only speak about the one that I'm working on, which is Upwork. Yeah. And I see there are questions from Sophie and Jackie. Um, Doty, you can decide who came first. Yeah, we can start with Sophie. Please mm -hmm. unmute yourself and ask your question. Uh, hi, Anna. Thank you so much. That was really, really um, packed and very helpful. Now, I've tried, I, 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 I'm an executive assistant full time. Uh, and I was thinking, since I'm, I've not gone to, rather, I'm not planning to go to class soon, like, uh, what can I be doing with my evening hours? And a friend of mine told me she feels I can be very good. Uh, as a virtual assistant, considering the work I do in the office, that's a colleague. And so I said, I actually don't understand much about it. And that's why I grabbed this opportunity. 
uh, just to learn. But I've tried to go to Upwork and even other sites, but when I see a job that I see I can do, uh, it tells me that uh, my area of location does not allow me to do that job or something like that. So how do how, what do I do to edit that bit so that I'm able to get work from elsewhere? Because I, I always get, I'm qualified maybe on the job, but when I get to that point, uh, there's that disclaimer of the location. So how can, how can you help on that part? I think it's all about profiling something. Yeah, so that's again, as I told you, it's technical. You know, if I give you an example, clients prefer, will always choose who they want to work with. And sometimes um, it's the preference is based on a region. Number one, region because of the hours difference. Um, for example, if somebody is in America or Canada, they might choose to work with somebody who is, of course, we know most of South America is Spanish speaking, apart from Brazil who speak um, Portuguese. I can't remember Brazil and which other country. And so they might prefer to work with somebody who either is in the States, who understands the systems and blah, 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 and who is in the same time zone, as opposed to somebody maybe in Kenya or in Africa because of the time zone differences or Asia or even Australia, which is quite far flung. Okay, so that's a bit of a technical issue. And that's why I'm saying that when you're searching for jobs, I have seen that clients will always say for US based, um, you know, talent only, for example. If you see that, you don't need to insist to, to, because another thing is you cannot hide your IP address. You know, somebody will be able to see where you're based just because of the IP address. Even now, you the computer, the, the way the web works, you know, you can tell wh where the person is located, even if they don't tell you, because it will show you, you know, like the, there's a time, you know, there were hackers on Google and they'll show you the hacker was hacking from Russia. You know, I got one message some years ago and that was how the IP address works. So you can't hide number one, the location, but you can still find work if you're based, um, 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 there's somebody even who's saying, yeah, uh, Christine Ombiba is saying that you can use a VPN to get the job if, if location is a barrier. But again, I also know that there are some people, if they hear you're based in a particular place, they'll just drop you because there are people who will, get, will start a contract. Then they, if they hear, oh, I cannot work, like I'm based in the UK and this person is in Canada, they're like, no, 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 I don't want somebody to be based in the UK. I want a fellow Canadian or I want an American, you yeah. see? So sometimes, unfortunately, there's nothing much you can do about that. but when you look at the platform, there are jobs that are open to everybody because they're like, there's a team of people I know, Kenyans, and they work even with people who are in, in um, I don't know whether they say Asia or Canada or where, and they have worked with them for years, you know? And so um, what you need to do is just review your profile. Maybe there's something about the profile because now I'm not a technician to tell you the specifics. But one thing that I've found is that if you find any challenge that is, can be assisted by the customer service people, always ping them. There's always someone there to help you so that you can see, if, is there a barrier? Is there something that I can do? And that kind of a thing, yeah. Thank I hope you, I've answered your questions. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, yes, you have. Yes, you have. Thanks. Okay, Karibu sana. Who's the other person? Uh, the other person was me, Jackie. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, I think the person who went before me has asked the question that I wanted, but mm -hmm. and uh, kind of Hannah has responded to it partly. Mm -hmm. But also in the process of our talking, I feel like <laughs> the other question has been answered because my question was, so how do I make sure that if I get a job, I'll be paid? And she's alluded to that she's only familiar with Upwork. Mm -hmm. which now she's unable to explain any other because you see, you get into an assignment and then you're not so sure the person will pay you. So I don't mm -hmm. know if she has more to add to that. And then two is I have a full-time job and I'm thinking the virtual assistant assignment is something I want to do like a side hustle and that would be from five onwards, mm -hmm. which uh, takes me to my question is now on my official profile, I do mm -hmm. not want to alter what I already have there. So will it mean mm -hmm. I have two profiles? 
which now one that when people check me out, they'll be able to pick out uh, what they're looking for, which is inclined to the virtual assistant, or I still use my official to bring that. I feel like there's likely to be a conflict because what I currently have, for me, I would want it to stand that way because of the space I am in or in the profession I am in. So how best do I manage my profile to stand out to do the virtual assistant work? And mm. then uh, lastly, I have had an opportunity to do work on Upwork. And this, I was working with someone who was building a website. And most of the guys who took up the assignment were from Bangladesh, Pakistan, and Ukraine. Those people ghosted us many times, you know, like mm -hmm. uh, developers of websites. So you get mm -hmm. this, you go all the way, halfway they ditch you, they disappear. But because, you know, you already placed the money on Upwork and you have a milestone, Sometimes you end up paying, but when you review the work is not up to standard. So those are the challenges to expect. But also the question she asked about, uh, she answered to that sometimes people will look at your IP address and not decide to work with you. There's not much you can do about it. But mm. I recently gave somebody an assignment. She, she said she's trained on a virtual assistant work and she was looking to practice. So I said, I'm looking for a doctor, a dentist in Cyprus. And believe me not, this girl got for me a hospital, booked for me the appointment. And yes, and the hospital wrote to me. So I felt like it works. So don't give up, even if you don't mm -hmm. get one assignment or two, hang on in there, continue looking, your work will come through. So thank you very much. The platform is very informative. I will mm -hmm. continue engaging because I feel like it's really a side hustle that I can pursue to make a few extra coins. So guys, mm -hmm. thank you, you're doing an amazing job. And I'll check you out, uh, trust dot, and see how much I can interact with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so thank you. Thank you, Jacqueline. Anna, do you want to respond to that? Um, um, okay, the technical part, I can't respond. Um, I think Jackie has asked and answered her own question, I think. Uh, when she said, um, you know, there are people who ghost, there are, you know, payment issues, uh, there's nothing you can do about the IP address. Um, I know there's somebody who talked about VPN, uh, but but still, um, when somebody is, is em employing you, like I've heard of a case where um, somebody was, was asked for a recommendation. The, you know, the way now you've gotten the job, so you're saying now, these are my referees. And one of the emails came from the same IP address as the as the candidate, that cancelled them from the job. So you can, there are things you can't hide, and so um, from we all use VPNs and what have you. But for me, what I know is that you can't do anything about a location because the only thing is to be very careful. For example, I know we have a dispute team that handles disputes like the ghostings and the what have you and the scams and blah, blah. And that's why I was saying, if you're already on the platform and you face any challenge, whatever that challenge may be, because I don't have, I'm not in customer service to know what is the, what are the myriad of issues. There are experts in all those issues, whether it's payment issues, whether it's um, a customer has done this, whether the contract is hanging or whatever it could be, ghosting or whatever scams, there's always a team that is able to handle that issue and resolve it to both your the client and the talent, the person's, uh, you know, um, satisfaction. And then again, also, that why I was saying also interact is because these are, these are um, incidentally, I'm actually the Kenya, the, 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 the community group leader for the Kenya group of freelancers. So those who are willing, if once they join the platform, I can add them to the group we sometimes have what we call talent hurdles where people share their experiences on the platform, whether it's you've worked for one year, two years, six months, three months, one month, whatever. The more experienced people who have been there for five, six years. And it's very helpful because you then hear how you can solve issues. And that's why I was saying networking is also very important because if you hear, for example, Bangladeshis are bad people, don't engage a client in Bangladesh. That is a secret that nobody will tell you. Okay, but again, are we also saying Bangladeshis are all bad? No, they are good clients and they are bad clients. They are bad Americans, they are good Americans. They are bad Canadians, they are good Canadians. It is just for you to, to 
to ask and have everything defined. Like I know Jackie, you asked, you talked about Jacqueline, you talked about, can you do gig work after your working hours? Yes, you can. But again, also remember your health. If you have a demanding job eight to five, like me with the previous jobs I had, I, there's no way I could have done this work. Ma, I would not, sorry to use that emphasis, but I would never have been able because my bosses were, were my work was very, very demanding. For example, I would get calls at night where somebody goes to an Airbnb and they say, I hate my hotel. Now, at that time, I, I, I you know, now it's at night. I don't know what to do. I have to call the uh, hostess and tell her, my client has said, my boss has said they don't like the hotel that you have booked them. They have to get out of that room and they have to get out tonight. Now, can you imagine if I have meetings at night and I have this other, my boss, where I'm fully employed, I'm a full-time employee, is demanding something. There are times I've even taken my bosses. Remember, I talked about being a personal assistant sometimes. I've taken my bosses to buy clothes. I took my boss one time in the school to go and buy clothes at Woolworths when their luggage was left in the airport. Now, if it's at night, 7, 8 p.m., when it, which are the co-working hours, and I have to go to the airport, or I have to organize to move somebody. One time I had to go at night to go and move somebody from one hotel to another. I couldn't, and nobody will pay you bonus for that. I mean, we'll pay you extra. Only God will pay you. <laughs> if you have a good boss, they'll pay for you. Sometimes your boss will say, here is a nini go for a massage, or here is a 5K, umenis idea. But you will be called upon. So it's up to you, Jacqueline, to assess. You have your eight to five or your nine to five. Are you really going to be able to give your best to this other job? If you have a short-term contract, three months, one month, and it's something that is easy to do, fine. Maybe you can give yourself seven, uh, maybe from 7 p.m. to maybe 11 p.m. So that Pia Ulale, Wamuke Kesho, you know our roads. If you are commuting and you're not working remotely, it means you need to be in person in your job. So that when you work those hours, you finish. And so when you're starting work with a client, always outline the working hours, the duration of the contract, of course, the payment and all that. But most important are those working hours so that you're not having somebody expecting you to work also 40 hours per week. You know, 40 hours per week is the normal eight to five, Monday to Friday. Then now you are, you're overwhelmed. Now maybe the person tells you, I expect you to be online by 6 p.m. And maybe between five and six is when uko kwanjia uki commute to get home. And you, which means you will never rest. You have dirty from the whole day, you are tired, you have not had a breather. The only breather is that one hour when you're commuting from your place of work, get to the, to the to all, switch on your laptop, start working higher. Maybe you are going to work until 11. So, utaoga sangapi, utakula sangapi, utalala sangapi. Na ujue bado, after, after all that, you have to still sleep, wake up to go now to eight to five. You'll be working a very terrible life you, and it will be very difficult. If you're married, if you have children, even more difficult, even if you're single, it doesn't matter. That is a very difficult uh, life to live. So unless you're doing a short-term project and it's once once, that's fine. But I wouldn't advise you to have an eight to five and another eight to five. That one is not going to work. Uh, I can tell you also these jobs become demanding. You know, when people realize you can do the job, you keep getting more and more work. So, and it's within those evening hours, depending on the location of the, of the client here. Oh. Thank you so much, Anna, uh, given us more detailed information. I think uh, we are out of time. So at this point, I just like to appreciate everyone for coming. If you think this information uh, or rather this session was informative or met your expectations, you can give us a thumbs up. Um, we are also going to be having another session next week. Uh, that will be on Thursday on copywriting. So if you are a copywriter or looking for ways to grow in that area, you can um, Stay connected with us on social media. That is at dot Kenya on Facebook, Instagram, at Twitter, and check us out on LinkedIn. We are going to be having more of these sessions, and um, there's also something good cooking. Uh, GIZ in partnership with us are um, currently uh, working on uh, creating um, courses that is uh, for gig workers. And uh, gig workers are going to be benefit from skills where you're going to be able to upskill, um, do courses, train yourself on different uh, things, uh, and then you can be able to grow in your uh, in your gig work. So please uh, check us out. We'll be rolling out that soon, and you don't want to miss. Um, unless you have a parting shot, Anna, 
you can share with us? Uh, any parting shot that you may have briefly? Yeah, all my parting shot is just thank you so much to you, you yourselves, Dot Kenya, uh, and for your partners for inviting me, for Eric finding me on LinkedIn. I know I was not always very quick because I was uh, I've been sometimes quite busy. Uh, thank you also to all the participants, even those who have left uh, for being engaging, asking questions. I wish you nothing but the very best as you, you seek to, to get into the virtual assistant space. Um, I know Dot, Dot will share maybe the LinkedIn and, and then I can share, share some of the other resources that I have, that I had on the slide deck. Um, yeah, and I wish everyone the very best for those who are celebrating Eid, yeah, happy Eid, yeah. And thank you so much and have a great afternoon. Thanks, Anna. We'll be sharing mm -hmm. this recording on our YouTube channel. And after it's up, we'll also share on our social media channel so that in case you feel like you need to revisit this conversation, you can be able to do so. Uh, Eric and uh, Petronila, do you have anything you want to add? Uh, thank you, Anna, so much for honoring us and uh, spending this afternoon with us. It was available. Uh, session. I think most of us have gotten one or two things from you. Um, we hope we can work with you again in the near future. And thank you for the participants for staying on. I hope this was useful to you. Enjoy your afternoon and the long weekend. Thanks, Pontranila. You too. Bye. Bye, everyone. You are free to drop off. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. Bye. God bless. Mm -hmm.